Good morning guys. So we are at Alabama Hills, California. We stayed overnight. It was freaking freezing and we're glad we're alive. Um, but today, instead of just like giving you guys a video about Alabama Hills and everything around it, um, I'm pretty sure most of you guys already know what it is. I just figured it'd be a good spot to kind of just go over all the overland gear that we just recently picked up, just to give you guys an idea for what you guys may need for your future overland trips. I recently just got a battery upgrade. I got the Optima yellow top. So as you guys know, Optima is pretty tried and true as far as the battery goes. It can tolerate very cold temperatures and it recharges well. Um, so it pairs well with our solar setup. And then also it can tolerate um, running a lot of other accessories. We're planning to run quite a few accessories on this car. so. A good stable battery is very very important all right so as you guys already know I have the bad luck overland uh, charge can solar setup you don't have to go chasing the Sun with your car you can just set it up anywhere like we have here and just start taking the power of the Sun and recharging all your gear so how we have this setup right now um, is that the charge can the charge can connects to the battery and so this is the batteries being charged by the solar panels and then this solar panel setup is charging the battery on the car and then it's also charging my power station we opted for a power station instead of a dual battery setup for the portability and the ease of just taking it anywhere with you and this is nice because um, we can take it into our rooftop tent and we can plug in a heated blanket for the really, really cold nights. Um, but we actually instead had this hooked up right here to our portable fridge. And um, this um, battery system lasted quite a bit. So even though it, it was on all night uh, running the fridge to keep our food cold, uh, it only used up like 40% of its power. So that's pretty good, and I didn't really have it on the best uh, power saving mode. It was on medium, so slightly aggressive, but if in case the voltages drop, it will stop uh, sucking out the battery. So it has a battery save mode. It did not take long to charge. Uh, we made some breakfast earlier, uh, and it literally said two hours to charge, and I guess it's been two hours now, because it literally says like a minute left. So that's freaking awesome this battery is gonna last forever so we have multiple outlets uh, to charge from this machine and then we also have some more outlets on our solar charge um, battery setup so as you can see I'm charging my DJI Osmo pocket and then on the 12 volt it's charging the power station and then my power station is connected to the fridge so let me show you guys the fridge now. I really like how easy it is. Like, look at that. Like you're able to hold quite a lot of stuff. Um, and this was only for like one night and we probably also overpacked. <laughs> but we kind of overpacked. We kind of overpacked, but overall, like this was great. Um, on the other side, we're able to adjust the settings. Super easy. I love it. Um, and you know, it didn't take too much convincing because the fact that like I think it's necessary to have food that stays cold yeah and we actually purchased this on sale I think for this 45 liter uh, fridge freezer um, uh, portable refrigerator it was I think we spent like 350 no maybe 450 on it yeah I'll pull it up and I'll post a link in the buy uh, the link in the description for you guys if you guys are interested in this cooler it feels really well made i like that the outside is metal <laughs> or yeah it's it's these are nice and sturdy look at that so when you're when your fridge is full and you need to pull it out of your your vehicle and or carry it you know those handles make a huge difference nice and sturdy for sure yeah and i really like these latches too nice metal latches boom pops open another cool quirky feature is this led light sick 
if you guys think that you need a refrigerator, you don't necessarily need to have a refrigerator. You can spend $15 on a cooler and go overlanding. All right, guys. So how did we mount the refrigerator, the refrigerator to the back? So we took out the, the base platform on our Outback and we kind of just cut up this piece of wood that fit really well. And then instead of having those uh, tie downs with the with the ratcheting cl uh, clamps straps. or ratcheting straps, we just nailed, we just screwed in pieces of wood that was left over um, so that it doesn't slide around. And then we found this bracket and then we just got pieces of rope to tie it across the top here so that in case, you know, when we're off-roading or when we're traveling or you know, just on the highway, you don't want to have your refrigerator crashing into you when you get into an accident or when you hit a huge big bump. Yes. So yeah, that's definitely needed. You need a tie down for a fridge, especially this thing when it's like, uh, it wasn't that heavy actually. No, it wasn't too heavy, but once you fill it up, it's going to be heavier. Yeah. And that's why it's really important to have it strapped down. And also the reason why we built this little platform is because there's going to be tools underneath and all sorts of things that are underneath to also save us some space. So that's why we also screwed in these hinges so that if we ever need anything, we're able to lift up one side without having to lift the whole thing, remove the refrigerator, all blah, that blah, jazz. Blah. So super functional temporary let me just say it's temporary it's not like a perfect system yeah. it's just something that we needed to do for our trip now and just in case um we we don't have enough money to build out our interior this will do for us so so you just move everything over and then there's a little thing right here we can reach up and just reach everything so this still needs some organization um I try to organize it a little bit, but yeah, we have access to the foam stuff here and then underneath it too, we can pull out the foam and then we can access what's underneath it. I think we need a bigger table because the whole like stove that we just got is taking up the entire space and it was slightly difficult for me to, you know, set some ingredients down, like have like a prep side and then like a done side, so to say. But you know, I got these two rocks. We make it work. <laughs> rock, rock, so and I'm... me, I'm the rock. <laughs> and so I'm super excited about just having this stove. This is like a huge upgrade from our backpacking cookware. Like we can't cook anything besides heat up food and then pour, pour the hot water into like those dehydrated packets. So having some nice, real cooked food on a nice like in the middle of nowhere camping trip is freaking awesome i love cooking if i could cook like all the time i would do it but then i'd get fatter and that's not good for me but and more anyways, weight to the car and it will add more weight to the car making the transmission hotter and then i'd have to get a bigger transmission cooler <laughs> anyways i'm super stoked on this this is like not that expensive of a stove um, and we're looking to integrate this into like a whole like slide out kitchen for the rear eventually So I think this is like the perfect size It's strong enough to do most of the types of cooking that I would like to do and it doesn't hurt the bank as much It's like only $50 I believe and we got this at Walmart Coleman Thank you so much Coleman. You guys make great products at a very affordable price So go get yourselves a Coleman Real quick guys, thank you so much to Click Chair for sending us these chairs. We no longer have to carry big bulky chairs when we're overlanding and everything. These are small, compact, fit in tight places and you have more space to store your gear rather than take up all of your space with just a couple chairs. So thank you Click Chair for sending us these chairs. We're super excited to have them and take them along with us to our trips. And these chairs are super comfortable. They're very sturdy. They're supposed to hold at least 300 pounds. I'm not 300 pounds. Neither am I, but... <laughs> but this is great. This has been super <laughs> sturdy, super easy to pop up open. And yeah, we're really loving it. All right, guys. So before we head on out and head to Trona Pinnacles, we figured might as well, while we're here in Alabama Hills, hit up Mobius Arc. So yeah. Thank you. 
It's beautiful. All right, we made it to the Mo Mobius Arch. Mobius. All right, guys. So we are making our way back down to San Diego, and since we're off, since we're on the 395 highway, we figured we make a slight detour over to the Trona Pinnacles. So that's where we're gonna go to end this video. All right, we are now at the Trona Pinnacles. Looks freaking sick. I've never been here before and freaking awesome. Huh? Yeah, I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll wear a better jacket next time we go out for some quick pictures. All right, guys, so we just kind of drove around Trona Pinnacles. Freaking amazing, beautiful. Must see if you guys are in the area. It is quite a bit of drive, um, but it's been well worth it so far, guys. And you can also camp out here too because it's BLM lands. So, without further ado, let's get some drone shots. <laughs> 